Let's jump to our free agent wish lists here. Guys that we're looking at, we think can fit. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I tried to guess some of the names that you were going to throw out there. So I tried to go, <laughs> I try to go a different route and, and try to find different names. So I guess let's uh, let's go through your list here quickly. Uh, let's start at tight end. I don't think anybody would be surprised by this. There were a bunch of gifts and memes tweeted out as soon as this guy we found out was not going to be tagged on Tuesday. His name is Hunter Henry, Greg. Yeah, I just think it's, you know, look, I would be fine with him or Jonu Smith, one of the guys. Uh, I would just say my preference is Henry because he's he's 26 years old. He's uh, six foot. Uh, I was just looking it up. Six foot six, I think he is. Six five, 250 pounds. Belichick has a long history with this guy. Knows his high school coach, spoke at his high school. Um, he's he's the he's one of the best Y traditional tight ends that I've seen come around in a long time. Now, look, he gets hurt a lot. There's no question about that. And that's part of the calculus here. Yep. And uh, which I don't like to do. Uh, but you know, look. I think that they should sign Hunter Henry if he gets hurt. I'm not going to rip the Patriots. I mean, you know, look, it is what it is. Um, but I think he – I think if you and, – and I also think that Hunter Henry fits well with what you might have at tight end because, you know, you still have Devin Asiasi and Dalton Keene as a fullback tight end hybrid. Um, I'm not expecting those guys to hit this year, but let's just say Asiasi builds off the last game of the season, he fits more in the Aaron Hernandez tight end athletic tight end role. Right. Um, and that makes him a good pairing with Hunter Henry. So that's why I go Hunter Henry over Johnny Smith, but look, beggars can't be choosers and I'll take either guy. Yeah. I've got Johnny Smith at tight end, a uh, legit receiving tight end. He's got yep. tons of yak skill. Uh, he can kill you down the seam. I do think he's, you know, athletic, like you're bringing up. And I do think Hunter Henry is probably a better fit, but Janu has been healthier. Uh, so I, I would go with Janu Smith. Everybody wants a wide receiver, Greg. We all know the Patriots need a wide receiver. You have a wide receiver. When he was in Philly, people were cracking on this guy for dropping footballs. That that news story clip, that would be the greatest thing ever when the guy is yes. talking about Nelson Aguilar and he just looks at the camera. <laughs> In dead pants, which is one of my favorite moments of the last couple of years. In sport. So it was, didn't he catch it? It was that the guy who caught a baby, like, come out of yeah, a window? Yeah. He's like, I didn't drop I it like Nelson baby. Aguilar. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, he didn't count like Nelson Aguilar. And he looks at the camera. One of the best moments <laughs> of all time. Uh, so, but now, but Aguilar goes to Vegas. He actually put together a pretty good season. Uh, you and I yep. talked about him. I don't know if it was last podcast or it was last week. They all run together. But you've got Aguilar as an option at wide receiver. Yeah, um, that's a. I, I might say that's a little bit of. Let's just say I think the Patriots like him. Um, Ooh, and I think I think that. Yeah, and, and look and remember, and I think we've mentioned this before. At least I've written it. Um, you know, the Patriots optimally um, would they use their money to get youth and versatility, and that goes double for offense, and I think also a wide receiver. So instead of you know, the antithesis of that would be like AJ Green, who's old and he's a boundary possession receiver at this point. Right. So Aguilar can do everything. He can go inside, outside. He can run jet sweeps. He can do whatever. You're absolutely right. Um, it didn't work out for him in Philly, which, you know, could make it you're a little scary to come to a similar place like Boston on the East Coast, where, in, you know, in Vegas, where nobody really cares. He played better. Um, I, I just think that he fits what they do. I think he played a lot better last year. Um, I'm not overpaying for any of the wide receivers, but I also think that the Patriots will be active on the trade market, say, and, and maybe I should have put this down, and, and I don't know if they'll do it because of the money, but um, OBJ, I, would not, I would not rule out the Patriots in a trade for uh, Allen Robinson. Oh, just say that. nice, nice. So yeah, I, under I, the tag. Very interesting. Allen Robinson is a dog, as Cam Newton would say. Yes. Uh, he, that guy, he's got great hands. Uh, he's a very good route runner. He plays all the time through injuries and all that stuff. Uh, seems to be a leader with his head on right. 
and, you know, very good in the red zone because he's a nice, he's a bigger target. And again, he's dependable. He's fought through double coverage throughout a, a lot of his time in Chicago. He's played with bad quarterbacks and made them look really good. And Allen Robinson's a stud. Uh, my, my wide receiver that I threw out there is Curtis Samuel. I think yeah. he's somebody that, you know, I kind of love what he can do. You talk about versatility. I think he can hurt defenses on all three levels. He can be the screen guy, the jet sweep guy. He can run intermediate routes, and, and he also can beat you deep and stretch the field. He has that speed element that the Patriots desperately need. And overall, I would just say playmaker. And I don't think the Patriots have enough playmakers on offense. I think Samuel is a playmaker. He plays downhill, even for his size. He plays physical. So I, I think he could be a lot of fun in the Josh McDaniels offense. Yeah, I, I I think that's a good name. That's a that's a name that I uh, threw out there at the trade deadline for them to get on uh, the final year of his deal, and then you know maybe you recoup the comp at the at you know at the worst. Uh, I'll just say, say you know tough time differentiating. But how much better in terms of how much spend? And Demir Bird's already been here, and he works in this offense, um, you know. But you, your point's well taken. He's a, he's a good football player. He does a lot of things, and I would be fine with him here. All right, next on your list, another cap casualty: Quan Alexander, linebacker. Yeah, this is an in, this is a very interesting situation because I think this is a guy who was traded around the deadline from San Francisco to the Saints and then only played like a game or two with the Saints and got hurt. And yep. uh, he was on his way to getting a big contract. And there's a chance to get cheap and on the rebound, he's an athletic linebacker. He runs all over. I think if you can get a good um, a good price on him, he would be an excellent player to plug in and be high power and see and it happens in the draft, but he's a football player uh, played in the three, four, you know, sort of versatile scheme in, in San Francisco with what they do there. I think he fits what the Patriots do. Um, he would be a guy that I would add at linebacker. All right. We have a couple of guys that mirror each other. So I'll just go with one more. Uh, and it's on the defensive yep. side. I gave you a couple of offensive guys, Dalvin Tomlinson. He's one of those, yeah. you know, 6'3", 320 defensive tackles, a legitimate run stopper, and I think he gives you help next to Lawrence Guy, who I think you do bring back. So to have the the double team of Tomlinson and Guy, you know, whether you rotate them from time to time, whatever you do, you need another guy. Bo Allen is not going to be the person you need him to be. You need somebody to play in the middle of that line. I know you've brought up you know, some other names, and I know you've got other names as well that we'll get to. I've got Dalvin Tomlinson as that defensive lineman run stopper that this team, I think, desperately needs. Absolutely. He would be, uh, you know, now that Leonard Williams tagged um, Nick, I would think that Dal Dalvin Tomlinson would be number one on my interior defensive lineman list. But my problem is how expensive is he going to be? I think he's going to get really get paid. And so, and also that's why I eliminated Shelby Harris in Denver. Because I think he's really yep. good, and I yep. don't want to go old, so I put Sheldon Rankins from the Saints, who maybe is not as good as Tomlinson, but he's he's going to be twenty seven this season. Um, you know, really good player in that scheme. Gets hurt a little bit. I mean, Kawan Short, I would also have out there, but yep. he would be a one year. He's thirty two. One year. I love KK. I think he's a, he's still a really good player, but. Uh, you know, no question that Dalvin Tomlinson's the best interior lineman now on the free agent market.